अहंकार श्रृंकार रहस्य युक्ता श्रींकार गूढ़ात्त महाविभूतिया नमो नम श्री गुरुपाद ओम नम प्रणवाय शुद्ध ज्ञानकमूर्त निर्मलाय प्रशाताय दक्षिणामूर्त गुरु पूर्णिमा कॉल द डे ऑफ द मास्टर बट एक्चुअली इट इज द डे ऑफ द डेवोटी A student goes to a teacher and learns something. get some information and then he walks out of the school there is not no more information just like looking at a guide book like a tourist guide you go with a tourist guide to see a place the guide shows all the places or like a traffic police sometimes he directs you or a gas station you go and ask someone where is what and they'll give you some information you take it and you say one thank you and there it is finished isn't it you went to primary school middle school and whatever you grade you call it grades of school secondary school you collected information you learnt about mic you learnt about computers learnt about mathematics learnt how 2 plus 1 is 3 <laughs> This is a student one who collects information But information is not knowledge is not wisdom Is it wisdom If just being having lot of information one's life changes grows then it is not just information or that information cannot effect a big change aye then comes a disciple 
disciple follows the example of the master. But a disciple is with the master for the sake of learning wisdom, for the sake of improving his life, for the sake of attaining enlightenment. He has a purpose, a cause. So he is not just collecting information, but he is trying to look a little deeper. He is trying to bring a transformation in his life. He wants to make sense out of his life. That is a disciple. A disciple is still centered around himself. So disciples take some time on, of their own, according to their capacity, they grow and one day they may get enlightened. Hmm? And then there is devotee. <coughs> A devotee is not there even for wisdom. He is simply rejoicing in love. He has fallen in deep love with the Master, with the Infinity, with God. He doesn't care whether he gets enlightened or not. He doesn't care whether he learns a lot of knowledge or wisdom or not. But that very moment and every moment immersed in divine love that is enough for him or her. A devotee is very rare to find. Students are all over, disciples are few, but devotees are there. It's nothing great to become God or be God whether you want or not, all are already gods. <laughs> A stone is also God, you are also God, everything is God. There is nothing great in wanting to become God. God is already there, but it is great to become a devotee. Do you see this? Everything, whether you want or not, is already God. But the love, devotion has flowered somewhere, where the devotion has flowered totally. The flower has bloomed. That is devotion, the devotee. Hmm? Attraction is everywhere. Love is somewhere, but devotion is again rare. Devotion is very beautiful. A devote, a student comes to a master, teacher, guru with tears in his eyes. There is so much problem. And when he leaves also, he leaves, carries the same tears. But the quality of the tear is different. It's of gratitude. Still tears flow, but they are of gratitude, of love. We 
it is so beautiful to cry in love. One has cried even once in love, they know the taste of it. What is surrender? What is devotion? And the entire creation rejoices it. The entire creation is longing for one thing, a transformed tears. <coughs> From a salty tear to a sweet tears. One of Buddha's disciples got enlightened. Sariputra was his name. When he got enlightened, <coughs> Buddha told him, now you go ahead, go into the world and preach, teach, and do the same work, carry on my work. No, Sariputra left Buddha, but he was crying and crying and crying, and people asked him, what? You are enlightened, why are you crying? He said, who cared this enlightenment? It could have waited, could have... I, would, uh, I didn't even bother about it. I never asked for it. But the joy of being at the feet of Buddha was so great. Being a devotee was so great. I said, no, I am missing this. I would have preferred that for the enlightenment. There is no separation, there is no difference, there is no distance, yet it has a different flavor, different joy. That is devotee. A devotee will never fall. He cannot fall. There is no chance for it. Hmm? When Krishna was leaving his body, he spoke to Uddhava, the last Gita he spoke, and Krishna tells to Uddhava with tears in his eyes, tears are rolling out of Krishna's eyes, he says, these gopis, they are so beautiful. He says, I can't stand the amount of devotion they have. He tells them, you go and tell these gopis, these devotees of mine, that only they can free me of their gratitude and of their love. It's so beautiful. He rejoices. He says, Krishna says to Uddhava, go and tell them, that is the glory of devotees. He says, I am not in heaven. I am not in temples. But where my devotees sing, I am right there.
So devotion is something that can move even rocks. <laughs> there was a Zen teacher. Zen is Buddhism always says evenness, you know, be very even. <laughs> there was a Zen master who thought he was very enlightened and went around saying, I am enlightened. And he happened to meet one of his masters. The master gave him a puzzle. It's called koan. It's called koan? Koan. <laughs> and the koan was the statue has eyes. And the tears rolled down silent. Hearing this, the Zen master was shaken. He said, there is some depth in it. That love is something that even divine rejoices in it. The infinity longs for you as much as you long for It's waiting to receive you. God is as anxious, as much anxious as you are to be near. So, <laughs> when a devotee flowers in this planet, God is so happy. That is the next sutra. <laughs> Tat prapya. Attaining that, attaining divine love, one sees love everywhere. All over. Only that that is seeing. I am not seeing. Tat prapya, tadeva pasyati. Wherever one sees, one sees the divine. If whatever one perceives, one perceives divine. Tat prapya, tadeva pasyati. Tadeva shrunoti, only divine is heard and divine is hearing. Some of you have noticed when you are saying something or teaching something, talking something, especially about something that is valuable, worth, love and wisdom, you see that you are not speaking something else, it's that the Guru is speaking through you. Attaining Sadhguru, the Guru himself looks sees through you. The Guru is speaking to you. Tat prapya, tadeva bhashayati. That alone speaks. The love alone is speaking. In fact, all actions are propelled by love. Have you seen this in creation? Even if, some, if you get angry, behind that anger there is love.
sind das? Even if you are worried about something, behind that worry there is love, isn't it? If you really don't care for something, you don't worry about it too. Huh? Worry is a product of loving something which is not permanent, which is not eternal. It's not because of love. Because of the object of love, the pain comes. See that? But behind every action there is love. That prabhya, attaining that wonderful divine love, only that looks through, hears through, speaks through, only that is heard, that is spoken, that is seen all over the creation. Isn't that beautiful sutra? Tat prapya, tadeva drishyati, tadeva bhashyati, tadeva shrunoti. God is so grateful to a devotee, as a devotee is the Supreme. In another place Krishna says, I am running behind my devotees. I am running, chasing them around. <laughs> He says, because they are rejoicing in the divine love. There is nothing of my mind, I, I, I in them. They are immersed in love. They are not caring for anything but being in love. Nothing matters to them. Tat prapya, attaining that divine love. There is full centeredness. See, everything follows divine love. Knowledge, wisdom. That is surrender, value of surrender. All the fears drop away. Fear is lack of love. <coughs> Only one thing can eliminate fear, that is love. That is dedication, that is devotion. Now the next sutra, Gauni Tridha Guna Bedat Arthadi Bedatva. Little longer sutra. There are three types of secondary love. We, are, we were talking about the divine love, the supreme love. Now they say there are three types of secondary love. The secondary love is of course useful in some way. What are the three types of secondary love? Hmm? Affection, attraction, respect. One out of Tamasikkun. Tamasi. Tamogun. Tamogun means one out of a state of st 
stressfulness. Now, you are friends with somebody because you have a common enemy. You see, you are getting together just to destroy something. But that getting together to criticize, talk, or destroy, or there is some affinity in the group. There is some love. But that is out of utter ignorance, sheer ignorance. This is one type of coming together. There is great love there also, like terrorists. You know, terrorists, they, have, they don't have fear. You know why? Because they love some idea. They put their life to it. Don't you see this terrorist all over the world? Huh? What they are doing? They are putting their hundred percent. They are really dedicated, really devoted, but out of anger, hatred, and ill will. This is Tamogun type of love. This is called Tamogun love, Tamsik love. And there is Rajasik love. Rajasik love is out of restlessness, out of loneliness, out of impatience, out of lust. You think you love somebody, you really not love that person. You are just wanting to have pleasure from that person. Your mind is on the pleasure. After a while that dies out, when the attraction dies out, your love disappears. That type of love is Rajasik. It is better than the terrorist, love of the terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> there is some amount of selfishness. It is an animalistic love. Do you see animals? They come together when they get attracted, and that is it. Dogs come together, and that is it. Animals come together. The whole creation breeds. There is love behind that, otherwise the creation cannot happen. If dogs don't get attracted to each other, they won't produce children. The creation, action, activity, behind that there is love, definite. It's natural love. the second type of love. The third type of love is something that comes out of knowledge, out of awareness, out of gratitude. This is sattvic love. Alan made this favor to me. He helped me. So I am grateful to him. Next time I see him, I feel so happy. I was drowning in the lake and he came and put, pulled my hand out and saved me. He did some favor when I needed something. I needed ten dollars, he gave me twenty dollars. So I feel grateful for his gestures. Hmm? I see some good qualities in Alan, he is a wonderful person. So I am attracted towards him. This is Satvik love. I appreciate Tori because she does, she has this good quality. I appreciate Divya because she sings so beautiful and does the asanas and all so beautiful, she has good qualities. Or I appreciate 
Hmm? Rashri, because she has this, this, this good qualities. She gives big smiles. <laughs> Then there is a cause, there is a reason, there is something hooked to the love. This is sattvic love. See, it's called sattvic love. But these three are secondary love. And who gets into these three stages? And three types of people also fall in love with the Divine. One is one who is suffering. If you go to many churches or temples or even spiritual groups, people whom you find is those who want to escape from their suffering. So they want to go and pray to God, God, get me, free me from this suffering. This is enough of it. I want some peace. Sufferers cry from their heart. And then, people who want something more, not necessarily they are suffering, but they want something, enlightenment, or X, Y, Z, something, want to find the meaning. This is second type of love. Some, they want something. People with desires. People with suffering, people with desires, and third is people of inquiry. People who, has, who is amazed, who is seekers, who search that there is, there must be something more just this world is not the end. There is something beyond this world. So one who is searching the meaning of life, meaning of the world, the secret of the world, is the third category. The first is one who is suffering, wants a relief from... Say something. <laughs> suffering. And then those who are desirous of something, attaining something, either wealth or enlightenment or something, who wants something, wanting people. Second type, who pray. The third is one who is seeking, wants to know. He's not wanting enlightenment, he's not, just curious. Want to find the meaning of life, what is next, what will happen, what is about this universe. These three type of love with these three type of people are secondary love. The secondary love can help you to go into the primary love. And each one preceding is better than the other. A Rajasic love is better than the terrorist love. And the love out of gratitude is better than even the desirous love. Hmm? All other things, gestures we make, huh, is to bring up this devotion, love to mature as devotion. Huh? This we have seen. Huh? First is attraction, and then attraction grows into love, and love grows into devotion. Have you noticed this happening? You are attracted to, to a dog or a bird, you bring it home, then you start loving it so much. If that love to even the animal turns into a devotion, there it has flowered. 
See, love dies if there is no dedication. Isn't it? If you have only love and no dedication, will that love stand? Huh? No. When that love becomes dedication, dedication becomes devotion. Dedication is a phenomenon where your love, which otherwise turns into fear, is arrested. You have a lot of love. If you don't add a preservative, it's dedication. <laughs> the love will go stale and become fear. Everyone has the capacity to love. It needs just one step to make one dedicated. Education, that is education. You know, in army, military, this is what they do, nothing. The march fast is another thing. This one is made to dedicate, dedicate, dedicate their life. You know what is done in science laboratories? It's not a martial dedication, but an intellectual dedication is brought out. Isn't it? <coughs> huh? Can you find a great scientist without dedication? It is impossible. So purpose of education is to make you dedicated. That is what a disciple does. When the dedication completes, the, dis the disciple flowers as devotee. So Guru Purnima is the day of full moon. In the full moon, reminds one the fullness of life. How full our life has become. So that full our love has bloomed. So a devotee rejoices in his or her devotion. Jai Gurudev! <laughs>